The Ukrainian paratrooper unit suffered heavy losses when it was attacked by Russian forces on the way to withdraw from the strategic cities of Severodonetsk and Lysyhansk. When we held on to the front lines, we did not suffer any incidents. Only when we withdrew were we ambushed, said the commander of the Ukrainian paratrooper unit. After crossing the retreat under the lanes. Bombs of Russian forces. They received orders to march to a new defensive position on June 26, withdrawing from Severodonetsk and Lysyhansk. Two cities known as the umbrella of fire of Russian artillery, after weeks of fierce fighting. A day earlier, the mayor of Severodonetsk announced that the Russian army had taken full control of the city, including the Azot chemical plant. Lysyhansk. The last major city in Lugansk province still controlled by Ukrainian government troops is in danger of falling when Russian forces and separatist militias have broken through the southern line and advanced into the central area. The Ukrainian paratrooper unit retreated with armored vehicles, but because there was not enough space inside, many people had to sit on top, which was not protected. The first bomb fell as the convoy entered the village of Verkhneokamiansky. They identified it as a cluster bomb, which unleashed many smaller bombs and caused heavy casualties on unarmored ground troops. After a series of explosions, many paratroopers sitting on armored vehicles suffered serious injuries to their hands, feet and heads. But the remaining men did not have enough time to treat their teammates' wounds because they were still within range of Russian artillery. The paratroopers quickly stopped the bleeding of the wounded, pulled them into their armor, and quickly found their way out of the village. The convoy sped away from the open road, across the field, to the trees about a kilometer away. They drove under the trees, covered with camouflage branches to avoid, eyes and ears, from unmanned aerial vehicles, UAVs, that were searching for targets on the battlefield. The uninjured soldiers began to treat their comrades, but could only use simple first aid tools, as they had long since cut off their supply lines from the forward stockpile of medical equipment.